I'm on standby for the next three days, which unfortunately, because I live so far away from the airport, means that I don't get to stay at home during my home standby. So instead, I'm going to Josh's parents' house, which is around 45 minutes away from the airport. So still not ideal, but better than having to pay for an hotel. And I'm gonna stay there for the next three days and see if I survive this standby. I'm gonna bring you along and show you what it is, the standby life, and exactly what it means. The thing with being on standby is that obviously I can get called for any flight, which means I don't know where I'm going. Luckily, we only have two flights out of Heathrow Bays, so I will either be going to Singapore or to Perth. So it's not that bad, I just have to pack for those two places. And the trips are not that long. So basically for Singapore I pack two dresses because that's a three day trip, well four if you count the days you're spending flying. And for Perth I packed, I packed some jeans, and like shirts, tops and like a small jacket because in Perth they are in spring now so the weather is getting relatively good and that was it but then after my standbys or after my trip I'm gonna go straight on vacation to meet Josh in Asia so that's gonna be another vlog we're not gonna talk about it but that means that I also had to pack an entire bag for that ideally I would have taken one bag only just one big suitcase but we only have one and Josh took it with him but I've asked Josh's mom to lend me one of theirs so when I get there I'm gonna pick up my two carry on and I have a backpack and everything and I'm just gonna put everything in a big suitcase so it makes it easier to travel instead of having to travel with a million bags. I also have to take the dogs with me obviously so the dogs are upstairs I already put their beds in the car and I've set up the dog covers and I have my two suitcases here so that's the work bag which is completely full and after they call me from standby if they do I'll remove the clothes from the place that I'm not going to if that makes sense. I have my backpack and that's the other bag with the rest of the things and then I have my shoulder bag which is also part of my uniform where I have the laptop, the toiletries and things like that. Now I'm gonna go to the car, I need to load all of this, I need to empty the bins so the house doesn't smell and then load the dogs in the car and then we're gonna go for our long drive. Right we are in the car and ready to go, I have Miku here next to me, Suki is in the back seat. None of these dogs really like going on the car, Miku gets car sick. So I've given her her travel pills that hopefully helps. Sometimes it helps, sometimes she still throws up. But usually she's very quiet. And then Suki just cries and makes noise the entire time. So two different ways of dogs not enjoying traveling. Before we go, I'm gonna check one last time to see if I've been allocated the duty. My standby only starts tomorrow, but sometimes they do let you know before the standby starts, just to help out and imagine like tomorrow is Friday, so imagine they give me a flight on Saturday, for instance, I wouldn't have to go today. So let's see. Okay, it says there's no unnotified duties, so that means I'm still on standby, which also means we need to go. Two hours and ten minutes, so we'll be there at quarter past five. Not too bad, not great either. Wish me luck, I've never done the long drive with the dogs in this car. Usually when we have the dogs, we take them on the other car, but I prefer driving this one. So wish me luck, fingers crossed. And also I don't want to be called from standby because I really want to go on vacation. And if they don't call me, I get to go sooner. I still don't have the tickets, but you know what I mean? I can buy them if they don't call me. <sighs> fingers crossed. Okay, I'll speak to you later on. I think I mentioned I'm staying at Josh's parents' house. So again, I'm not sure what kind of recordings I'll be able to get. But, you know, let's see, every time I say this, I end up not having anything, so I'll see you at some point. It's 11 p.m. I had a shower and I came to bed. And I'm talking really low because everyone's asleep. Um, standby starts tomorrow, 8 a.m. The two flights tomorrow so far are fully crewed. I checked. So, unless someone calls in sick last minute, it should be fine. Fingers crossed. The next day. Of course I got cold because why wouldn't I? <laughs> it's the first day of standby. I woke up at 7 a.m. and I checked the roster and my standbys were gone. So I had three days and it was saying standby 8 to 8. And then it was gone and it was just saying days off. And I was like, oh my God, they canceled my standbys. And I was thinking to myself, maybe I should call them and double check what it means. But I didn't want to call them. And then imagine that I had actually changed it to days off. And then they'd be like, oh yeah, it was a mistake. Thanks for ringing. I'll put you back on standby. <laughs> so I didn't want to ring them. So I left it. And then like two hours later, I checked again. And there I had a flight for tomorrow. And it's the longest flight we do, which is six days. This is four. It's six 
States <laughs> in Australia and that includes a hotel standby over there which I've never done but it's the same flight that I've always done <laughs> which is good I like that flight I like the plane we fly to that flight and I know what I'm doing and I'm doing the same position again so it's gonna be fun and it gives me extra time there which also means extra money even though it means less time to go on my adventure after my days off that I mentioned but business for another vlog at my list of flights that I have had to survive on standby so I survived the first one and the second one and then when it came to the third one the next morning just got to the airport it's half 9 a.m and my check-in is not until 10 35 so i have just under an hour no just over an hour and i'm in the car park so i'm gonna get changed put my heels on I need to put my scarf i don't have it here it's in the jacket which is in the boot it's raining even though it's quite done a little bit so at least i don't have to stand outside the car in the rain getting changed but when I say change, you know, I'm wearing my uniform already and I'll probably just gonna put the blazer on top of my cardigan because this is short sleeve, so it's nice and toasty. The flight time is, I just got a message from the cabin manager and it was 15 hours and 50 minutes, so 16 hours. <laughs> Blink and you'll miss it. And then I'm going to be in there for a while. I have a hotel standby. I don't remember if I mentioned this. I know that I spoke to you briefly the other day but i don't know if i gave you the details but basically today is saturday we'll end on sunday then i have the rest of sunday i have the whole monday the whole tuesday then on wednesday i'm on standby no on tuesday i'm on standby and then on wednesday i leave and land on thursday question marks everywhere i'm not sure i clearly need to double check <laughs> my shadow <laughs> hold on this doesn't say when the standby is i would have to click on it anyway i'm on standby at some point it's a hotel standby i've never done one of those it's only for four hours and it's just to cover the flight that is about to depart so as soon as the crew leaves the hotel the standby finishes uh it's four hours and they pay you like 40 quid for it so it's not bad besides the daily allowance that obviously i get for that for being there an extra day i'm working on the same position that i've always worked <laughs> in this airline i always work the same route the same aircraft the same position i haven't done anything else but i'm mastering the art of being that position. I know exactly what to do and when to do and everything is great and let's get some passengers and fly to the other side of the world again and I'll see you there when I'm not gonna look as nice and fresh as I look now so breathe it all in and then we can compare when I land. See you later! I'm not sure if my face says how swollen my feet are but I'm so tired. <laughs> I just got to the hotel room and it's really weird because if you've seen the other vlog where I was here this room is exactly the same. Obviously, it's an hotel. The rooms are always very similar. But every now and then, even if the rooms are the same, they're like inverted or in a different rotation or there's something different to them. But this one is exactly the same. Like the bed, the desk in here, the TV. Remember my adventure with the TV? <laughs> Trying to plug something in. The chair, the mirror, the table, the station, coffee thing, open wardrobe and bathroom everything is exactly the same but i'm on the highest floor of this hotel it's the 26th floor let me show you the view the view is different so we are on a different side of the hotel because you remember i had that red square there's no red square <laughs> you can see some water over there at the back and then it's some buildings but it's nice because here right in front of me it's very open so Maybe this time <laughs> we'll manage to see the sunrise like proper pretty. I'm exhausted and I have no plans for this trip. But I'm here for a few days. But right now it is 1.50 p.m. on Sunday and the flight was super busy. I didn't manage to get any sleep on my breaks for some reason. I don't know why. Like I couldn't fall asleep. I think I'm gonna have a shower, put on my pajamas and lay in this very comfortable bed because that's all I remember is that the bed is super comfortable and sleep with no alarm and let's see what that takes us probably until like midnight and then it's gonna be the same over as last time. I don't know. Approximately 10 hours later. It's 1.20 a.m. I was asleep until like 10 past midnight and I was on my phone for a bit, catching up on notifications. And then I ordered some food and 
Do you believe that that kebab shop that I ordered last time and I was so excited to have it again because it was so good and it was so much food so it lasted me for two full meals. I don't know, I don't know if they closed or if they're just closed today. I don't know, I went on my order history, I clicked on it and it says it cannot find the shop. I don't know what it means, but it breaks my heart. I ended up ordering pizza from another kebab shop because apparently everything that is open at this time, they're all just kebab shops. There's also McDonald's and I was gone, but then I didn't. And I have the worst headache. I don't know what's causing it. I'm assuming it's I didn't drink enough water before going to sleep, so I'm dehydrated. I've had some more water, but I'm hoping that the food will also help. If not, I'll have to take some painkillers. It's not looking amazing. That's what I'm saying. Also, my glasses are all dirty. Oh, I don't know. I'm not feeling great. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. You know what might help? Grey's Anatomy, and I think there's an episode, a new episode that is out. So I'm gonna grab the laptop and see if it is. Hi, thank you. I have station 19 on the computer, and the food just arrived. Oh, it looks good. I ordered ham and pineapple, even though it looks more like bacon than ham, but it's fine. Water and tissues there. Tissues both for the food. And I might need them for this and for Grey's Anatomy that I'm watching afterwards. Yay! The new episode of Grey's Anatomy. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm an emotional wreck. Oh, I can't stop crying. Thinking about how life changes all the time. And how you put your people first and you make decisions based on that. I don't ever know if it's the wrong decision, but you do it anyway. <sighs> oh, <laughs> this episode touched me, <laughs> guys. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really upset with myself. So I've been laying here in bed with my laptop. Just I cannot even open my eyes. Hold on, let me hide. <sighs> with my laptop, I've watched the episodes, and now I've been editing videos just because I'm bored and like I don't really want to go back to sleep. It's like half 5 a.m. and I had my curtain closed obviously because before that I was asleep and then I saw there was light around the curtain and I was like oh my god the sunset <laughs> the sunrise I cannot believe I forgot to check out the sunrise so I opened the curtain and I was hoping that the light around it was just a little bit of light and then I was still in time to see the sunset sunrise but no it's a full unblown sun and the worst part but it's right there it's right the sun is literally in front of the window. So this would have been an amazing sunrise. <laughs> I'm so upset. Why do I do these things? Why did I not open the curtain? Why? Why? Just why? It's right there in between the buildings. It would have been gorgeous. I came to the bathroom to get ready for the day. It's half 6 a.m. and then I noticed that I had a thing on my tooth and it's probably been there since I finished eating pizza last night which means that all the previous updates I recorded with something on my tooth <laughs> Ah, is this rock bottom It's just before 7am and I'm meeting a colleague for breakfast uh, not someone from my trip, funny enough but one of the girls that I did the training course with she's also here, I don't know when she's leaving but she's also here she messaged me last night when she was here and asked me if I wanted to go for a coffee and I said, yeah, sure, let's meet for breakfast and then we were both awake super early even though I think in her case she actually slept and just woke up early <laughs> like me, who's been awake the whole night but anyway, we're meeting I think we're just gonna have breakfast here at the hotel I've never had it here on my previous airline, our rooms for the crew included breakfast but in here they don't include anything it's just literally just the room and if we get just a small discount for food and then we get more money for the days that we are away because we need to provide more food for ourselves anyway i digress i never had breakfast here but i've heard some people saying it's decent i think it's probably like uh, buffet style so you pay a fixed price and you eat whatever you want i'm just throwing some makeup on to hide the fact that i've been awake the whole night i don't know what my plan is for the day but finish having breakfast around eight that's literally just an hour and then I'll be able to go straight away to the supermarket so that's done and I can buy some food to have in the room like I did last time mostly snacks and junk food because have you met me last time I ended up buying way too much food so this time let's try 
prevent ourselves from making that happen again, but you never know, you never know. So if I do that at A, and then I come back here, put the things away, and then I'd say go for a walk, but I already did the walk last time around here, so I think I actually need to go somewhere new, and I have the whole day today, literally. So maybe even take a taxi somewhere? I don't know, I think I'm gonna look on the computer when we're back and have a proper look and come up with an actual plan for the day. It doesn't need to be the whole day, but at least a few hours. outside world do you want to see my haul you're gonna see it anyway <laughs> i bought toothpaste how exciting is this also it's so small 75 mils no less 40 grams why is it in grams in europe toothpaste comes in mils not in grams i also bought this colgate thing that is teeth whitening treatment and now the question is do these things actually work does it do anything it says you put it at night before going to sleep it's like a little brush you brush it on you leave it on for the night and then in the morning you brush your teeth as normal this probably exists in other countries I, i'm not claiming this is an australian thing i'm claiming that i saw it in the shop because i went to look for toothpaste and i'm easily influenced by nice advertising then i bought two lipsticks for working and I decided to buy like glossier ones. I hate glossy lipstick, that's the thing. The truth is that the matte lipsticks that I've always used ever since I started flying, that last forever and they are what I call the flight attendant approved lipsticks. They are matte and they last hours and hours, but they are very drying and I never really saw a problem with them until I started doing ultra long haul because before I put them on in the beginning of the flight and even if it was a long duty I would apply them halfway through and it would be fine but now I have to reapply several times and because it doesn't really go away it just starts cracking by the end of the day I have several layers of lipstick on my mouth and it's not ideal so I decided to buy creamy ones so let me get a mirror and we can do this experiment together and the idea behind this is obviously that it's going to be more comfortable to wear in the long run than the normal lipsticks oh god it's very red I thought it was gonna be like see-through okay the quality is a bit crap this one is was cheap also the brand is NYX I don't know if this is supposed to be red as NYX uh, but you know you probably know this brand this is butter gloss and the color is blg 20 red velvet roche veloche can you see it i mean it is glossy doesn't seem sticky i thought at, it was at the beginning when i was putting it on but it doesn't seem sticky oh it transfers to the teeth a lot look right i don't know if i love it let's try the other one i removed it just with the tissue so this is how it looks like afterwards without makeup remover no anything my lips are a bit sticky now uh, anyway let's try the other one so this one is not a lip gloss it's a normal lipstick but with like a shiny finish and it's by maybelline and the color is this here 630 red revolution and it's a cream lipstick what do you think it's super red again this is the kind of colors that i usually don't wear on the day to day that life i wear if i'm working and yeah it's less shiny and glossy than the other one makes sense the other one's a glossy this one is just a creme lipstick okay my final thought is that i think i prefer this one instead of the other one the true test is going to be wearing it on a flight so i might wear this one on my flight back to the uk in a couple of days just to see how it lasts i'll probably keep it on for now unless if i go to sleep then i'll take my makeup off but while i have my makeup on i'll keep it on as well to get a good gist on how it feels and all that i bought a swimsuit because i mentioned a few times i'm going on an adventure after this 
and I forgot to bring a swimsuit and I don't know if I'm gonna need a swimsuit because I'm not going anywhere particularly hot but just in case just so I feel good myself knowing if I want to go to the spa or something like that I have a swimsuit so I bought it it's just very basic then I went to the supermarket and I bought my lovely red tip bananas and I bought oh my god guys is this not the most beautiful mango you've ever seen it's from Australia it's from here it smells so good and they were all so pretty I don't know if the camera makes it justice like the way it fades from the red onto the yellow passing through this sunset orange it's so pretty <laughs> and they had so many on a shelf in different levels and they were so pretty I got two yogurts like an squishy packet so this is passion fruit and I don't know what brand this is, I don't know if this is like the own brand of the supermarket I went to. Icelandic style Skyr, which is the high protein yogurt. I don't really like those yogurts, I don't know if this will be slightly less thick. And this one is the non, and is as well like with protein yogurt. And I had already chose this and then I saw there was normal yogurt without being protein. But I had already selected them and I couldn't be bothered to change them. So this one is salted caramel, sealed. It's gonna get covered in lipstick because one problem with this kind of lipsticks is the transfer. The matte ones are usually transfer proof. These ones go everywhere where your mouth touches. Oh, it's so bitter. It's so thick as well. Like it stands on its own. It gave me goosebumps, can you see? Okay. And then I bought biscuits, but this time I was a normal person and I was controlled. I got two packs and two packs only of biscuits. These are iced vovos and I didn't see these last time in the supermarket but I've seen these online when I was googling what are the traditional snacks that Australians like to eat and this was amongst them. Iced vovos. I don't even know what it is. A treasured biscuit favorite topped with pink fondant, a strip of jammy raspberry topping and sprinkling of coconut. An Australian icon since 1906. Okay, this is what the iced vovo looks like. I like it. It doesn't have a boom in your face flavor. It's way more delicate than what I thought. And then I got this, guys, Oreos that are double stuff regardless, but they are cinnamon bun. I had never seen cinnamon bun Oreos, not in the UK, not even in America when I used to go there. Maybe I saw it in America, I don't know, it's been a while. This tastes like cinnamon, cinnamon bun. What the hell? That is so weird. Because it's not like the biscuit really tastes like cinnamon, obviously it does, but it's not just cinnamon flavor, it's cinnamon bun. You can taste the bread in there, and as well like the icing you put on top. That is really weird. I like it as well. I have good news and bad news. The good news is that I did an intensive research of things I can do in Perth for the next few times that I'm here and after that I've also finished editing a video and exported it and it's uploading for YouTube. The bad news is that I forgot to bring my camera batteries and my camera charger. So I have one battery only, it has one dash of battery and I have no way of charging this camera for a while. It's not the end of the world, but it is a first world problem that annoys me. Quarter past 5 p.m. I've been, oh no, it's flushing below battery. I've been in the hotel ever since I came back and I think this is it. I still haven't slept, so at some point I'm gonna have to fall asleep. <laughs> but I'm gonna sit here, watch uh, New Amsterdam and eat some more pizza from yesterday. And I'm happy that I have some snacks because I always feel like I need a little dessert after eating. So I'm going to do that and I will speak to you a bit later. Two hours later. I'm so tired. It's 7 p.m. So I've been awake for 19 hours. <laughs> Which is more than what a person usually is awake for in a day, right? The room is pitch black. It's not as light as the camera is making it seem. I have the laptop in front of me projecting light into my face, but even then, reality is not this light. I'm too lazy to turn on the light, so I'm sitting here in the darkness. The sun is setting again, there's not that much light outside. And I need to go shower and put my pajamas, because I was literally falling asleep here. I'm talking, I'm recording this so I can wake up, because I need to go shower before I sleep, take the makeup off, put on the pajamas, and I was supposed to wash my hair. I don't think I have it in me. 
Hello everybody, good morning. My battery is still flashing low battery, so this is gonna stop recording in any second. It's quarter to 11 a.m. Tuesday, I think. Anyway, I've been awake since six. I'm a morning person when I'm in Australia, so cheers to that. My curtains open with the blinds open and everything, and I love that. I love the view in this hotel. I love how big the window is, and I love just chilling in bed with the entire curtain open. Especially when I'm so high up, like I'm on the 26th floor, no one can see me, so I still have privacy because I'm so high up. I had all intentions when I woke up at 6am, I was like, okay, I'm gonna relax for a bit and then gonna go for a walk or something. Or I even thought I could go to the tower because they have an observation deck on top, which was one of the things that I did. Okay, my camera ran out of battery, so from now on, for a few days until I'm able to charge it, it's everything recording on my phone. I was saying that yesterday when I did my research on things to do around here, one of the things I saw was that there is a tower on top, it has an observation deck, so I want to go in there, the tickets are not even that expensive, they're like $20, so I want to go on top, and today when I woke up so early, I was like, okay, I can squeeze that in before my standby, I'm on standby today from 2.40 to 6.40 p.m., but the weather is miserable, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, I'll show you again in a second, but it's full of grey clouds, and I don't want to waste going on an observation deck if the weather isn't great because it's not fun. Like, you need, you want a good view <laughs> to see the city. So I've just been chilling here and honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've decided that I want to uh, try this fast food burger chain thing that it's Australian. It's called Hungry Jack's. It's also a 10 minute, 15 minute walk from here. It's on the high street where I always go to the supermarket. But I decided I wanted to try that. Getting ads for it on YouTube and things. And I'm a sucker for ads. <laughs> I'm every advertiser's dream. Like I see the ad and I want to buy the per product. But I want to try it. It's going to be like McDonald's or something like that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it before my standby starts at 40 It's 11 now. I don't know. I'm not very hungry. I had banana, I had some biscuits, I tried the salted caramel yogurt, they're terrible, both of those yogurts are terrible, it's mostly because they're so thick, and I hate thick yogurt, like Greek yogurt consistency, I hate it, but I still have them in the fridge, so I might still give it a try, and I have my gorgeous mango as well, <laughs> so I don't know, when I go to Hungry Jack's I might jump again into the supermarket and buy some more fruit, maybe, I still have one more banana, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I've just been chilling in here in bed and I haven't spoke to you yet today so I thought I would give you a little update even though there's no update I'm not doing anything this is my current look <laughs> I put on a shirt so that I'm not in my pajamas the whole day but I'm still wearing pajama pants anyway my standby starts in one hour so it's time to have a little snack so I have my mango here already washed it and I was thinking of making a nice display <laughs> together with this nasty yogurt. But I don't want to do it straight away because I want to taste the mango. And if it's amazing, I want to have amazing mango. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I have my box of cutlery that I have in my crew bag with me. So let's try and cut this up. Obviously, the knives are not sharp. So I don't know how this is going to go. The thing is, I don't have a shopping board or anything. I have a towel. I don't have a plate. I guess I could use this. Just to put the mango on top, hold on, let me rinse it, because who knows when that was the last time they washed these the plates. Also, how fancy is this? The plate is actually from Nespresso, what the heck? Okay, I guess we can try. Come on, little knife, you can do it. I don't know why I cut this in the middle. <laughs> I was distracted, I cut it right in the middle instead of next to the pit. Cut some squares out of this. Let's see if the internet hacks work. Imagine I do this and then I break the cup. It works! Let's see if the mango is as good as it's pretty. Okay, it's not the best mango in the world, and it's good. It's more pretty than good. It's good, just not amazing. This hack really works, but the cup gets all messed up on the outside. This section of the video is called What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> because we're just gonna ignore the fact that the cup was dirty inside the drawer. I'm gonna grab some of the nasty yogurt with nasty lipstick on top. So handy, it comes with a... In goes the mango. Some more of this. And a more mango. Ooh. Other people probably use the wine cups in their rooms. 
to actually drink wine and be sophisticated. <laughs> it's just a shame that the yogurt's not that good. I was saying that other people are sophisticated, but <laughs> I could take a thumbnail. <laughs> One minute, 37 seconds later. Remember when I said I was being sophisticated by eating that in a wine glass? <laughs> my standby starts in four minutes. So I've done my makeup, haven't done my hair. It's still messy and greasy, but whatever, I've done my makeup. I got things kind of ready to go. So I put the laptop is there, so I put the cover there so I don't forget and I don't have to go around and look for it. But then around the room, I moved everything here. So I have my food here and all the clothes and everything that I had spread around the room, everything is here, so that if they call me, I can just shove everything into the bag and leave straight away. Hopefully, they'll not call me, but if they do, it's a very short notice call out. I don't think there's an exact time on how long they need to give you, but it's short. It's like, we need you, get ready, go. So, you know, at least this way, I need to waste less time getting ready. Many, many minutes later. It's getting to me. I'm getting so bored. I've been in this room the whole day. I'm tired of being in bed, even though this nest is amazing. And I'm also pretty hungry. One and a half hours more of standby, and then I can go get food. I checked the delivery app, and the burger place that I wanted to try, Hungry Jacks, they have it there. And the delivery fee is only $3, which is like pound fifty. And I'm just thinking, is it worth to walk like 20 minutes, then there, then back? More like half an hour, because I'll probably walk the wrong direction at some point. Is that worth to save one pound fifty? <laughs> but at the same time, should I not leave this hotel room? Like if I don't leave to go get the food, am I just gonna stay here the whole day and the whole night? It's 6.40, my standby has finished, the sun is setting outside and I've ordered Hungry Jacks from Uber Eats because I just, I, I, I can't be bothered to go outside. Let's just take it easy because we've been taking it so hard so far. <laughs> I am probably the laziest person alive and I am so sorry that because of that I don't create more interesting content, but I create real content. <laughs> I got my food. I had to go downstairs to the reception to get it because the person that was in there was alone so she couldn't bring it up. Here it is. Hungry Jacks. And do the colors seem familiar to you? So, I went to searching to see if this was indeed Australian, just in case. And I think... From my research, I think that this is Burger King, but that when they came to Australia many years ago, some other company was already called Burger King, so they had to change the name. But I couldn't find an exact confirmation if that is true. So I'm not too sure if it's actual Burger King or if it's just inspired. It might be a franchise, but I think it's going to be similar. Which, obviously, it's way less exciting than what I thought of. The chips are not the weird ones that Burger King has. Mm. They're good. Mm. Oh my god. They're so good. So I ordered the Baconator, which has double the bacon. And I think it has two burgers in here. It is good indeed. Hungry Jacks is magnet approved. <laughs> Later that same evening. It's half 3 a.m. I was literally falling asleep with my head like this, watching videos on YouTube. I was doing my thumbnail and then I got distracted watching just random videos from people that, I don't know, that I found the videos. And I was watching that. And then I put the computer back on the floor, close the curtain and go to sleep. Oh, and before that, I need to call the front desk to find out what time we're supposed to wake up tomorrow. That's one thing that I don't understand about this airline. The roster doesn't tell me what time we're being picked up. It just tells me what time is the flight. But I don't know, and like, people don't know it either. People who've been here for years don't know what's the gap between the pickup and the thing. Yeah, I'm gonna call the front desk and ask them to tell me what time are they going to call. Hi, good morning. Uh, could you please tell me what time is the wake-up call for Qantas crew later today? QF9. Check-in was on Sunday. The rest of the crew left today. 
well, yesterday now, 26.09, 16.35, that's the wake-up call, yeah? Okay, perfect, thank you so much, bye. 4.35 p.m., so I'm gonna set an alarm for 10 minutes before that, just so I'm awake, because that's the time they ring the room. Good morning, everyone. All right, so what's the plan for today? I need to start getting ready in about two hours, and I haven't done anything, obviously, I mean, I'm in the same place where I've been for the last three days, which is in bed, which is great. I need to do uh, some things on the computer quickly before that. So I'm going to do that, get it done, get it out of the way. And I don't think it's going to take me two hours, but you never know. And then I need to start getting ready, which means put on the uniform, makeup, hair, and also pack my stuff and get ready for the flight tonight. Tonight, I am going to be flying with a different crew from the crew that I flew in with because I did the standby yesterday. So that was when my crew was leaving, the one I flew in, they were leaving yesterday and me and another girl were on standby for them. So if one of them wasn't feeling well and couldn't fly, we would jump in and cover so that the flight was, could still go. And there was two people from the previous day standby joining them, which is basically what's happening to me now. Because I was on standby yesterday, I'm going to join the crew the following day, i.e. today and fly with them, but they will have two people from their crew on standby today in case one of us is not feeling well. Does that make sense? Basically, there's always two people who stay behind and jump onto the next crew so that they can stand by for the previous one. It's a bit weird, but I think they started that during COVID because back when they started flying after the lockdowns, they needed to do COVID tests before being able to fly. And so lots of people were testing positive during the layover and then put into the flights and the flights were getting jammed because they didn't have enough crew covering. So they started this whole standby process so they could make sure they always have someone covering. Because here in Perth, this is not a base. So it's not like if we're in Heathrow and someone calls in sick, they could get someone from standby and cover because it's a base. Here it's not. So here they don't have anyone at the base because it doesn't exist. And that's why they need to come up with these hotel standbys. So that's what's happening. And that's why I'm flying with a different crew today. So I don't know them. I checked their names online, but I don't know anyone. So. Let's see what happens. Hello. Thank you. Bye. Just got my wake up call, which means my pickup is in, in one hour. I've already started packing. I packed all my things in my bed and my nightstand. I just left the laptop because it's still charging because I have a long day ahead after the flight. So I need some battery in my laptop. So I'm trying to charge it as much as possible. I have my toiletry bag in my hands. And then in here I packed all my things as well. I'm ready for the flight. I decided to not iron the dress this time. <laughs> and it's bad. It's looking bad. Like the sleeves and under the arm and the skirt. But we're just going to pretend we're not seeing it. And once the cabin lights go down, no one's going to notice either. My laptop hasn't finished charging yet. So I've just been waiting. But I feel like now I'm just waiting for nothing because... It's not gonna get fully charged either way, so fingers crossed I have enough battery until I'm able to charge it again. I'm gonna say goodbye to you now. I hope you enjoyed this standby call out and the adventures of being on standby twice, actually. I know we didn't do much, but as always, I like to keep it real. And I think I've mentioned this in the past, but when I'm somewhere at work, yes, it's nice to see the city you are and do some touristy things but it's also important to remember that i'm not here on vacation i'm here at work so it's important not only to rest but also to not spend a lot of money like you would if you were on vacation because when you go somewhere on vacation you went there on purpose to see that place so of course you're not going to be looking at the price tag of everything you're just going to go enjoy yourself have fun and yes that's also one of the perks of my job is being able to go to new cities and explore but you need to pace yourself you cannot behave like every time you go there you are on vacation because even though we get money for being here that money is technically part of our salary so if we spend all the money every time we are away at the end of the month we'll have no salary left for our normal lives so that's why i like to keep it real and that's how i like to manage my layovers is by not doing everything in one go doing a little bit at a time i know this time was worse than average because i didn't do anything at all but it was nice to relax enjoy the hotel which is also nice staying in good hotels for free and now i'm gonna go on a quick 19 hour flight back to the uk and i'll see you next sunday bye